Ya, en la noche. <laughs> Honestly. Oh, only visible to you on this link. Show oh, wow. On stream. Oh, that's different. I've never seen that before. Um, so I'm not really even sure how this works. It's saying it's live right now, Fola. Yeah, but is it live on the actual Facebook page? That's what I'm not sure how that works. Oh, it, it is. It's connected. Ooh, I like that. Join me live on this link. I don't know if I necessarily want it to show across the whole thing, though. Okay, but we're live, so I'm going to share. Hi. Hi, Hello. Hi. Wow, we finally figured it out, you and I. Yeah, you. Yeah, me. <laughs> <laughs> Merry Christmas. Actually, yeah. yeah, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas yeah. to all. Yeah. I feel like that was a lot of fun. That so. was fun. <laughs> I just kept I... laughing the whole time. <laughs> okay. So, hi. We're here to talk about... Um, some Christmas stuff. Lovely people. Oh, it won't let me share it out from that place. But yeah, Crystal wanted to kind of suggest that we come on here and share about the challenges of Christmas. Can yeah, we call it that? Uh, that it's just full of different emotions and um, yeah. And in memory of my brother is really why I wanted to do this, mm -hmm. you know, to let people mm -hmm. know, um, to let people know that they're not alone, Fola, right? They're not alone. There's different avenues, different, mm -hmm. like, that they can actually reach out to, right? And and just basically connecting in that, that sense, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's so true. Like, I was working today, the mental health, job and I just I was talking to my colleague because so many calls that were coming in were steep I don't know what it was if I'm like just more sensitive to the energy but I could just like feel so much more kind of like desperation and the people's voices who were calling and also the scenarios that were coming up it was just like so so much like heavier than usual that's kind of how I felt and I was like why is that like it just seems like there's just so much more longing in people during the holiday times to you know and a lot of the incidences people were kind of alone in a sense right either loved ones passing away or well they're living in the family. illusion they're living in the illusion of what was right mm -hmm. and um it's it's all of a sudden you get a flashback or a memory, maybe a childhood memory of good times and, you know, that person's not around anymore and it gives you super anxious in your, in your, in your chest or somewhere in your body and, you know, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's true, and that's it, trying to like get people to understand that. People right? don't understand the con that's like the... the mental health. What mental health really is, right? Mm -hmm. It's living in the illusion of what was, and literally, you're getting flashbacks of, yeah, just you know, maybe whatever. You're getting flashbacks. It's a flashback of good memories mm -hmm. or even bad memories, for that matter, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think a lot of times it can be like traumatic stuff unfortunately right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah so like what else I guess are people supposed to do that's the thing right because you can't necessarily I think it's hard or unfair sometimes for us to say like well you know it's, it's harder for some people to let go of whatever that belief is or that the like programming around Christmas you know because it is so ingrained in society well I like, think also oh, we're there's so much pressure to to have like this perfect Christmas, right? Mm -hmm. And um, and I think that once you let go of the actual perfection of it all, that you start to see things from a different lens, right? Mm -hmm. And um, does that do you resonate with that? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So I feel like I always had a different view about Christmas, anyway. <laughs> Like, where am I from? I'm not from here. <laughs> Everyone loves Christmas and I, you know, maybe unless when I was really young as a kid, I, it was different. I'm not sure. But so what would you suggest people do? 
Um, well, there's, there's many things that people can actually do. Um, people can show up in a community. People can show up if, uh, just be very conscious, uh, that you're not drinking or doing drugs, um, and covering up any sort of emotions of any means, right? Mm -hmm. Um, you can show, show up in a local church if that's your belief system, right? You can put yourself in acts of kindness and, and show, you know, donate your time at a shelter. Um, there's different, yeah, there's different. What do you think, Paula? Yeah, I agree. I think a huge part is, you know, that we can't expect everyone to undo all the decades of programming and, you know, to just like, we can just switch off a light and be like, Oh yeah, I don't care about Christmas anymore. You know, all the pro step or the, the steps of Christmas. So I think a huge part is connecting with people who share a similar view about the time of year, or like what they value mm -hmm. is a huge part. Cause I think that's where a lot of the confusion comes in is that there's this like overvalued perception towards like the material goods or having to, you know, have the dinner a certain way or have, you know, whatever it might be. And that can get really overwhelming. For and sure, so yeah. really people like getting into a connection with what their values are, like what is important to you? Or maybe it's is not it? feasible. Maybe it's not feasible for mm -hmm. people to buy Christmas gifts this Christmas season, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, just understanding the best gift is, is really like being in the company of your friends, your family, you know, um, the fact that there's food on the table and stuff like that, it's not about the materialism. It really mm -hmm. isn't like it. Everything shifted for me when my brother passed away like nine years ago. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I like hundreds and hundreds, like I was saying to you earlier, um, dollars worth of gifts. And, and at the end of the day, it, I think the most important thing is to start appreciating the simplicities that are right in front of you the roof over your head, the food in the fridge, you know, mm -hmm. your best friend. If you only have one friend, appreciate that one friend. Yeah. Yeah. Go I make was talking with some people about that. Cause you know, it's like, there's a lot of pressure this time to give. And it's like, it seems like it's nonstop sometimes. It's like, Oh yeah. And then, you know, and then there's that whole, Oh no, I don't eat anything. But then it's like, but then they buy you something. And it's like, well, do you, you know what I mean? So try mm -hmm. to undo like, well, how to because I think deep down people do get offended in some way. Not everyone, right? It's all that. Ugh, anyway, but yeah, the conversation was like, what do you need to give people? I think that it yeah. should, as you get older, it should shift internally. I think wow. it should shift internally. It you know, and, and it, it, it's not about the hundreds and upon hundreds of dollars worth of gifts and stuff like that, right? Mm -hmm. It's it's really looking back to what you've accomplished this year or that you're healthy and maybe full of vitality and, you know, that kind of stuff, right? For sure, for sure. Gratitude, gratitude of the simplicities of life, right? Yeah. That's, I think that's a good start. You know, if anybody's in a, in a low vibration or, or having any sort of, you know, maybe writing out 10 or 20 different things they're grateful for, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then yeah, that you actually visually see it. Oh, I'm grateful for this and I'm grateful for that. And I'm grateful for this person. And they, they, you know, a divine timing came and helped me and wiped away my tears or whatever the case is. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. Gratitude's definitely something that can help. I know last, yeah. I think it was last year we had an event and that was part of, you know, like how can we give back or be thankful for things, you know, instead of just like receiving, receiving. So like balancing those two as well can be really beneficial, like whatever that looks like, right? For mm -hmm. everyone. So, oh, there's so many things we could talk about. Like even about the whole, you know, like donating money I think just and, and all these things. Yeah. Donating money. Mm -hmm. If it's feasible in your world, donate money. If it's yeah. feasible in your world, you know, it's as 
for me, it's, it's about for children, really, you know, it's Christmas is about making it magical and, and making it, you know, wonderful for your children and Santa Claus and all that kind of stuff. But as you get older, yeah, it's, it's not so much about the gifts, but, um, yeah, and you're putting pressure on people that you don't know where they are financially, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. As well, that um, that they have to spend thousands upon, you know. And I've heard people go into hawk over Christmas, trying to have this beautiful, perfect Christmas, and it's just ridiculous. Mm-hmm. They well, completely it's about lost appearances. Appearances, right? I think that's just our human condition: is we want to appear good and favorable in other people's eyes right and that's one way you know like we all have our own ways in which we've been like taught how to enjoy life or experience joy or to give even because I see that for myself like when I think like well what else could I give I got to buy something but I'm learning like it's not always about that but I'm also learning not everybody wants Reiki or access bars for (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I was like, here you go. You get access oh, bars. You get access bars. Yeah, here's a coupon gift book. And you get lots of hugs and kisses from me. Yeah. I mean, I have done that, some of those things. Yeah. Also, to me, it's like, well, why? To me, it makes sense because I see it as be- betterment in a sense. Mm-hmm. Um, also, like, it's the same thing like buying kids' clothes. But I kind of like my one friend has a good idea. I think it's like for all their kids, they do like, um, they each get like a toy that they want, a thing that they need, and a book or something like that. I have a I have a friend that does that actually with her kids, and yeah, these yeah, they get a need yeah. and a want. I I have a few friends that do that. They yeah, get two and gifts. It, yeah, and it works for yeah, it works for some people, right? So like, why not? Mm-hmm. But. Yeah, I think that this Christmas holiday, if you're feeling like at a low vibration and you're in the, you're living in the illusion of, of, of memories of, you know, somebody that passed, um, the best thing that you can do is, you know, do some sort of exercise. You're releasing like dopamine and serotonin and you're releasing the quartet of happiness in your body, your complete nervous system, obviously, right? There's, Mm -hmm. there's that avenue and, uh, and just like, yeah, we're, we're social creatures. It's, it's part of our DNA to be social. So get out, join a community, you know, and, and just be very conscious not to drink or, you know, out of emotion. Yeah. Turn to unhealthy or what could be an unhealthy coping mechanism, you know, and I've seen that conversation a lot is like when people go to these uh, Christmas dinners or whatever, and then conversations can get really heated, especially around family. Right. And then you're, caught yourself in this kind of toxic environment that mm-hmm. only leaves you then be feeling like really put down especially because mm-hmm. people are throwing in or mixing in different alcohol or whatever right mm-hmm. to kind of yeah. help numb the pain of whatever pain's happening or if they're antisocial or they don't yeah they don't know what to <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Like, who was I talking to about this and it was funny because around the same time like we had had a conversation and they got like, it was getting really heated and I almost had to like walk away from this conversation with family yeah. and someone had said that they had done this and I was like, wow. Oh yeah. They, they had like stepped away from a conversation with a family member and they just walked away and I was like, I'm like proud of you. Cause I, you know, like that was something that came across my Instead mind when I was going through it, but I didn't Eckhart do it. Tolle, I was listening to something the mm-hmm. other day about not, being in reaction mode and just being the witness Mm -hmm. and the observer of what's showing up in your element. And, you know, just instead of being in reaction, because with, with reaction comes, you know, some sort of reaction back at you. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's easier said than done being the witness. (laughs) It really, that takes practice, you know, especially, and I think that any sort of mantras as well, remind yourself, like Mm -hmm. if you start getting super anxious, remind yourself, like, I'm safe. I'm safe. I'm safe. I'm loved. I'm provided for, Mm -hmm. you know, I'm good. And bring yourself back into the moment because Mm -hmm. you are literally living in the illusion of what was. If -hmm. you have any sort of trauma around a divorce or separation or the loss of a loved one. Yeah. Yeah. And that's okay that things have changed too. Right. Clearly, like you can see that it is possible to move forward with loss or 
significant changes in relationships. So that's really important. And I think for yourself, Crystal, like, correct me if I'm wrong, that's something that you were able to do and like find new relationships, new connections that were like meaningful to you and like empower you, build you up, right? To mm -hmm. the person that you value and you want to be. So yeah, it is really important for sure. I think we're always really self-reflecting in a roundabout way and um yeah you're always you know or mm -hmm. you should always be self-reflecting and where did this belief system come from or understanding that oh okay well that's a flashback of of maybe trauma or something of that mm -hmm. means right mm -hmm. and and then bringing in you know anything that you might have in your toolbox or whatever the case is right yeah yeah, yeah. or pray just pray. That's been my biggest, you know, like, yeah, it's been my biggest savior personally, you know. That's good then. Yeah, definitely connecting to spirituality would be helpful. Hmm. Understanding that, yeah, that you are here for a purpose, that this is a journey, that your challenges on earth will become your blessings and just know that to be true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Tell it to me, sister. <laughs> oh, no. We're yeah. practice it all. Yeah, like present, you know, like the, the word present under the Christmas tree. The best present that you could get is to be more mindful mm -hmm. and letting go of, you know, what was. Or, no, I like that. I never thought of it like that. Yeah, present. Best gift under the tree. It makes me wonder, maybe got it messed up are we gonna talk about the pagan thing no <laughs> I, I don't know do you want to talk about Chris Christmas no I won't say anything it's already anyways now. yeah it's all good oh she's gone apparently it's just me now and I, I refuse to talk about the pagan thing, but I'll try to get her back on here and then we'll sign off. Um, if there's any questions though, or anything that people have before we log off, let me know. I think I can see if there's questions on here somehow. Nope. Maybe not. Okay. Well, that was really our conversation. So make sure you're staying connected with people that you care about, people that care about you, most importantly. Hi, Mary. I think you're commenting. Thank you, Mary. Your conversation the other day was enlightening for me as well. So, yeah, to all you who are celebrating or not, I hope you have a wonderful holiday and you can catch us again soon okay take care that's right that's okay i think it's funny i i'm finding all of this very hilarious okay i think it's live cool it's showing that it's live okay yeah i, I think now so. it's showing that um it's live. you could okay. share i mean you can share this one again i didn't how do i do this again share But you don't have to share it with me. I think I commented last time. So this is technically um, version or number two. Can I call it that? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Connecting with, you know, spirit and staying connected with spirit over the Christmas holidays and just tapping into whatever you have in your toolbox, whatever that may be or whatever that may look like, or maybe that should be what you should be implementing in 2020. Start adding stuff to your toolbox. If you're experiencing any sort of anxieties in your body and your mind and your, you know, start, whether it's running, whether it's, you know, going for Zumba classes, um, you know, I don't know, take a holiday if, it, if it's feasible, you know, Take a writing class. Get out of your element. Do something new, something blue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really important to start off the year that way, I think. Build the habit. 
yeah, and just, just keep adding, oh, I'm feeling anxious, I feel overwhelmed. And you can, you know, have that as an avenue, right? Mm -hmm. oh, I need to show up in the gym, I need to lift weights, I need to do yoga, whatever your thing is, meditation, prayer, join a community. That's really what it comes down to it is join a community. Join a like minded community. You mm -hmm. know, there's so much there's so much therapy nowadays. Like you can call, if you're suicidal, you can call the suicide line. They will help you navigate with your emotions and et cetera. Right. Yeah. Like definitely reach out to different, um, you deal with these crisis lines. All the time, and... Right. Fola, like, well, I don't know about all the time, but yeah, I mean, that was my job before, <laughs> Yeah. you know, like there are resources out there. A lot of people aren't aware. I think, yeah. And worst case scenario, if you have to go to a hospital, go to hospital and then they can connect you, right? If you feel like it's an emergency situation, then you have no one else to turn to. Yeah. And if you feel utterly alone, yeah, show up. Mm -hmm. It'll definitely mm -hmm. say I'm losing my mind, you know? Yeah. I can't, I can't sort out my emotions or I'm hearing mm -hmm. suicidal thoughts or whatever the case is. Yeah. It's important. This is because I do feel like 2020 is going to bring up a lot more of these sorts of presentations or experiences if people are not stepping into like their own power or doing the thing that they're meant to do here. You know, if there's so much, because I do believe like when we're depressed, there's a disconnect from what we feel we need to do in it's life and what we're doing out of my mouth yeah that is your inner navigation depression is your inner navigation for well, you bet mm -hmm. yeah pay and i just that. pay attention to your spirit right yeah yeah because i internally what's your spirit talking mm -hmm. to yeah and it can be hard to hear that like if you're really depressed because i like i had a period of quite like heavy depression uh, in my it was like halfway through my first year university and I really do believe it was because I just felt like totally disconnected from family after having gone home to spend Christmas time with them and then I came back and it's like now I'm back in this place away from people I care about that I'm like close to and spent my, most of my life with doing like something that I didn't feel really that much joy from and I remember having the conversation with my parents. I'm like, I'm just going to quit my, like quit school and I'm going to go and like live in England or work somewhere in Europe. And my dad's like, no, no, no. You know, like I'm kind of glad that they decided not to, but I had like periods that of like, you know, this on and off again, depression, but nothing as major as then. But I definitely see how it was related to me not, you know, following my truth or what I felt like I needed to do. It makes me really wonder, like, how would, different would my life have been, right? That those are all lessons, I guess, we have to to learn. And it's just a matter of, you know, like, and at that point, it's really, it was really about seeking out the support I needed. And I'm glad I had friends who were, they were the ones that were like, hey, well, what the hell's wrong with you, right? Oh, you so, got sisters for that, you know? Mm -hmm. Girlfriends, you know, well, your best friends will, what's going on with, with you? Like, they'll actually point out there's something off, right? Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. is, you're lucky. Lucky if you have those kind of friends, right? Or yeah, or, and I, oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say that if, you know, because I'm sure there's a lot of, like, a lot of lonely people, like, in, in you know, mm -hmm. Christmas time and everything like that. And people forget to, yeah, they forget to give gratification to what's in front of them. Mm -hmm. Their best friend, you know, that loves them so dear. Mm -hmm. Well, And even if you don't have anyone that's really close to, it could be anyone, right? Like, just a conversation. I think, I, I do believe, like, someone will come across your path to kind of support or guide you to the next place maybe where then somewhere that someone could get some help right Divine timing. yeah yeah for sure because you know there's something or whatever whether you're watching tv you're by yourself in your home watching tv for like a month straight and then all of a sudden the commercial comes on for something right and then you just feel like a nudge like follow that follow it for sure or i've met people on the street and in passing and and they said something just out of the blue to me. And I was like, is that an angel? Is that an earth angel? Mm -hmm. Like that was so bizarre. Like for, for that comment. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
I believe, yeah, the right people will show up in your path. I think that's really like what it comes down to is just connecting with your spirit and mm -hmm. understanding that you are a spiritual being having a human experience and you are here on a, on a beautiful journey, you know, for the darkness and, and the light. Right. Mm -hmm. And yeah, staying connected, whatever that means so for them for yeah. right, on a personal level, that's probably a good place for anybody. Like, you know, mm -hmm. Am I connected or am I disconnected? Yeah. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, for sure. You have to ask that inner part, right? Because you're going to have a thousand people around you or friends or whatever, family, and not feel connected at all. And still feel lonely. I've been, mm -hmm. in, I've been in those moments where I had friends around me after Ryan died, and I still feel felt utterly alone. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you have to definitely process whatever's going through and be honest with yourself, I'm sure, right? Like how you can kind of cope with that. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Anything else you'd love to sh like to share? Um, no, not about, that's about it really. Just, I wish everybody a really Merry Christmas and, and uh, for 2020 and that they, find their fire, they ignite their fire within, and they find their passion. Mm -hmm. Or remember what their passions were. That's, that's a huge thing, part of depression, and, and uh, is you, you, you forget what you were passionate about. Yeah. Right? So you kind of got to put yourself in a new element and start searching internally. That's the fun part. That Eventually fun. it becomes fun. <laughs> Maybe. Well, it should become in the sense of curiosity too, right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm not farting people. It's just a chair. <laughs> You're so funny. <laughs> oh. I think this is what happens when I work all day. Like actually have to go work. I do work. But yes. Okay. Well, Eat we'll have right. to do. We'll do this again because now we know actually what the hell we're doing. I know. Super fun. This be live thing, and I think it works. It's, it might be a little bit laggy, so I don't know if people. Again, I don't know if anyone's watching this live because I feel like I'm not seeing the screen properly, or if it even updates it on our like the <laughs> be live system. But if you are, comment. So we can actually read what you're saying. Because, yeah, it doesn't show any comments or anything of that sort. So this is our first time. So, you know. Yeah, and I'm, I'm surprised because, um, oh, no, because it says, I think, here that people should be able to comment. And that we would see it here. Comments from the live post appear on here, right? So it's, it's weird that the other comments from the last one didn't pop up anywhere. So I'll have to figure that out. Kind of makes it a bit more challenging unless you go on your phone and then kind of watch for people's comments during it even. So, yeah. But yeah, let us know too what else you'd like to us to talk about. I think we also have the podcast episode, the last one for 2019, coming out um, sometime this week. And that's a bit about us sharing goals and what the whole. What our goals are and what our mm -hmm. goals are. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it'll be exciting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 2020. Yeah. I don't know why I don't have a shirt that says 2020 yet. Totally get one. Anyway. 420, 2020. 420, 420, maybe. Hey, I've, I've made, I'm not, I'm not using any cannabis or anything for like, for the last month, I think. That's a whole other conversation we should talk about, but because it's like, yeah, new, starting fresh, starting new, completely like, Re revamping life right and being okay with that I think that's an important thing for sure and just trusting the process and I just saw mm -hmm. Nate said that trusting the process mm -hmm. yeah 
and and trusting that divine timing that the right people are coming in your element um that you're guided or ask for guidance you know whatever mm -hmm. your system is I, I always say to people like believe in fred flintstone believe in something like really like just believe in something other than yourself because once you experience you know <laughs> i know i'm <laughs> are you laughing <laughs> sorry i'm laughing because i'm thinking yabba dabba doo right I'm yabba just... dabba doo or wilma or i don't Whatever. know like but you know where i'm going with this right like yeah. once you feel that powerful intelligence come through your entire being it, it shifts, it, it changes, mm -hmm. everything. it's magical, it really is magical, and you start to see things in a different light, you know, and you start to embrace life in a different, in a different mm -hmm. way, element, and it's, it's really beautiful, right? Once yeah, more make, things come, for sure, you if you're open. Shift, you trust, mm -hmm. you can't, you can't be, you can't be doing if you're in a low vibration, you're doing the same thing over and over and over again. Well, that's just insanity. So change it up, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Change it up. Yeah. Be a shaman, you know, like that, that could be completely out of your, your element or, you know, go see a psychologist. Like how much shame is around like men mm -hmm. and, and like not that they have to be warriors right and that they can't they can't reach out and talk to somebody it was it's like you got 40 and 50 60 year old 30 year old men like these i call it the three paths on the back fola i witnessed it actually in my family um basically telling you know suck it up be a man mm -hmm. seven or eight but you don't tell a seven year eight or an eight year old or a ten year old to suck it up and be a man because that left such an imprint and that's no disrespect to fathers or forefathers but how many how many like millions of men were told this and now you know in a recession or in like a crisis or a divorce they feel less than themselves yeah yeah and they don't and they don't connect um that everything's happening the way it's meant to happen potentially like if you're going through a divorce potentially it was meant like it's meant to happen the you know you have nothing more to learn from that person mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or, or whatever the case is right yeah that's very i was thinking about that the other day because i had someone uh, like a male um and like the things they were talking about and the experience, like the thing that really came through for me was the fact like we are kind of hard on men, like you said, right? The way they've been raised and the generation before, and it was very like just, a, and then now with like the whole feminine sort of um, like um, empowerment movement, it's very much kind of confusing to men uh, in terms of like, well, how much is too much power or standing up and speaking and how much is not enough? And it's like they're trying to like find their way through that path themselves, right? And I think it's, yeah, I just felt a lot of like empathy and compassion for them just to be like, oh, like that was like really confusing. That is, you know, because it's like they show one side and then people will see it as being kind of too domineering, especially, you know, towards women or whoever. And it's just like, and then they're still trying to navigate their own emotions. So like that makes it even more difficult. Mm -hmm. And yeah, no wonder there is such high rates of like mental health issues, suicide, right? Amongst the male population. Well, that, that's what, I think that should be our next podcast because my perception on mental health crisis that we're in, I believe that it's evolution. Mm -hmm. I believe it's evolution pushing us to come into emotional intelligence. Yeah, I believe that. That's, that's where, that's just my belief system. Um, yeah. Cause it's and otherwise. It's, and understanding yeah. like, you know, not everybody's feeling the emotions in your body or not everybody has experienced where they witnessed an emotion in their body. Like I have, mm -hmm. or, or you have. Um, and it's happening. It's happening at different times mm -hmm. with different people. Right. Mm-hmm. 
So I think that, yeah, it's, it's part of evolution. That's just my belief system. Yeah, instead of thinking like, oh, we're all fucked up and broken. It's like, no, this is yeah. meant to kind of be a process so that you can get to the other place that you need to get to. Yeah, this is whatever this that is. A higher is. intelligence plan and, um, yeah, and empaths and all that kind of stuff. I, I think that it's just also part of evolution, but it, not everybody is feeling that embodiment. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Or the aftermath of like a negative energy going right into your body of somebody else, right? Is it that they're not experiencing it or that they, some people maybe sometimes it's like so, so detached? Let, potentially they could be just in the left side of their brain and just, you know, yeah, there could be that too. Right. But I do believe it's evolution. Hmm. Yeah. And I, and I wish, I really wish for men to be vulnerable in 2020 to, to open their hearts and, you know, share their emotions with, you know, whether it's one person or a handful of people that they can trust and know that there's nothing wrong with them uh -huh. Uh -huh. And, and they're loved and that they're safe. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. And I think doing that in turn, like leads to a more empowered life, more fulfilling life and that it's possible to learn how to do that for sure. I think so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll we'll chat again, Crystal. Of course, we'll usual. Yeah. Probably chat once we go off the live thing. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, Merry Christmas, all. I uh, I hope that you your present is to be present. That's mm -hmm. my gift to you. I hope I like that, that, that you you learn to be present, and that's mm. the best on planet earth and you you have that comprehension that everything is an illusion other than what i'm saying word for word right now everything mm -hmm. is an illusion and everything's oh. around other than what mm -hmm. i'm saying word for word so merry christmas yeah merry christmas love you okay. all bye bye ciao